Welcome to this meeting of the Social Work Committee. Um, just like to remind everyone present, this meeting will be recorded and the recording will subsequently be available for public viewing. Um, do we have some apologies? Good morning. We have 15 members present today and I have apologies from Councillor Collins, Councillor Crothers, Councillor Sim, Sim and Councillor McCutcheon. Councillor Brody is not present but he may be along in a moment. Councillor Ferguson. Uh, th thanks, Chair. Uh, Councillor Dick's on his way, stuck in traffic, I believe, but he'll be joining us shortly. Councillor Maitland. Councillor Brady has put in his apologies for the last month. He's away. I don't, th I don't think Councillor Dempster was mentioned there, an apology. Apologies, I have Councillor Dempster as an apology. Members, do we have any declarations of interest? None. Move to item three, uh, Social Work Services Revenue Budget Monitoring Report. The report will be presented by Colin Pentland. Good morning. This paper provides an overview of the social work forecast outcome position for the period to the end of August. The paper highlights the potential forecast overspend position of 373,000, which, which is a decrease of 64,000 from the last reported position. The main contributors towards this forecast position are children with disabilities, kinship care, agency placements, learning disabilities, and care at home for people with a mental health need. Social work are committed to controlling and reducing the forecast overspend, and as a result, have implemented several actions as outlined in section 3.3 of this report. Appendix 1 to the report gives the detail of the service spend. Appendix 2 gives details of progress towards the agreed social work savings. And Appendix 3 gives an update on the use of the policy development funding provided. I'm happy to answer any financial related questions on this paper. Thank you. Members, questions or comments? Councillor Carruthers. Hi, Chairman. A question. It's, it's no uh, major. I mean, I think it's right. It says an overview and at point, uh, paragraph 3.1 that it is a demand led service and we should take cognizance of that or at least consider it. But it's in regards to paragraph 3.8 and 3.9, I'm going to just give a wee bit more explanation in, in regards to both of them. Uh, agent, agency uh, placements are forecast overspend by 217 Koenig and Zone, but it's 3.9 is probably kinship care. I mean, it's a real rise in the last year as it, as it identified. Just want to get, get a, excuse me, I'd like to get a better understanding of what, what that's actually happening there. And is it likely to continue or is it Thank you, uh, Councillor Crothers. Um, I absolutely acknowledge that we have had a forecast rise in the use of um, kinship care. However, uh, there is a full review currently being undertaken, um, and I will come back to committee in December with a review of the kinship care process. There remain some challenges within this particular area of service delivery, um, and I think it's important that we recognise that we need to have um, an appropriate process and um, position statement for committee and I am committed to bringing that back in December. In the interim period we are continuing with um, the, the, the recognition that we are using kinship care um, within, within the region and um, making sure that we meet the demands of the current request for kinship care but it is important to recognise that we will be reviewing that process and um, there will be a robust report coming back in December. Uh, Councillor Tate. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my question is on 3.3.7, and it's regarding uh, learning disability. Um, can you expand on what the pressures are on learning disability and what are you doing to, to overcome that? The, the current pressure on learning disability primarily around, surrounds our in-house service and our in-house provision and particularly around about um, our move from residential provision to individual occupancy 
arrangements round about a, a facility in the stewardry. Um, we're working extremely hard to make sure that that's actually filled. Um, we're looking to bring um, service users who are out with the region back into the region, and with, with that will come the money that comes with that. And we would expect that um, within the year we would be able to bring that down significantly. Councillor Maitland. Actually, I think that um, probably has answered, answered my question. I was concerned about the um, level of overspend in the stewardry with respect to learning disability, um, because actual fact, um, the other localities don't appear to be under the same level of pressure. And I am assuming that this is Dunmuir Park and the fallout from that um, that is causing this difficulty. Um, I'd like to know um, when we do anticipate getting a grip on those particular problems. Apologies. Um, with regards to the stewardry, um, the pressure within that area is a residential care. It's to do with um, one high package, um, a temporary high package that, that, that come in during the year. The, the individual has now moved to another package. Um, as mentioned, I think three point. Apologies. And a three point one eight of the report. No, sorry, three point two zero of the report. Apologies. I think there was a temporary emergency placement that's required for the short term, which is affecting the Stuart's residential placement in that area. So, if I can come back, do I understand then that that's a specific um, problem? In the stewardry, that's fine. So the uh, the overspend, the three hundred and whatever it is, seventy odd thousand pounds with respect to um, that's region wide, and that's so Dunmuir Park comes under the region wide. That's correct. Yes. Right, and, and okay. Can I have a time scale then about when we are going to in fact see some sort of change in uh, in this particular position? I would anticipate that we will have filled the occupancies that are currently vacant that have just become available. Um, within that facility, certainly by, um, we will identify people probably within the next six to eight weeks and we will have moved them in in a further six to eight weeks, as I'm sure you appreciate some of the the individuals we're talking about have extremely complex needs and making sure that the, the support is right for them um, will take some planning to move them from where they are to where they need to be. Thank you. Uh, I, I mean, I, I have to say that it's been, Dunmill Park has been on the go for more years, I think, than members would care to remember. Um, and I can't help feeling that um, that we ought to be in a position, I think, to be dealing with this particular problem on a planned basis. So I would expect, I'd expect this to be sorted out sooner rather than later. I would certainly give you that assurance that Dunmuir Park will be full, and certainly by the beginning of next year. Councillor Scobie. Yeah, Chair, there are so many questions that, that, that could be asked. Uh, I will uh, more comment, but we'll finish in questions. Uh, and uh, as has been said by Ian, uh, in 3.1, uh, consideration should be given to the demand-led nature of this service against uh, what is projected as an overspend. Uh, and while it's been brought in, uh, brought down by 64k, I think we've got to look at the uh, effect and impact of that. On 3.9, in a follow-up to what's being asked, I think the, the important part to note here is that it's been continually on the increase uh, since the, the kinship cares were, were given the proper... Or, or, or given the recognition, they've never had the proper recognition. And I think it's to that point, I, I don't see this declining in numbers. I can only see this uh, continually increasing. And it's to ask the, ca the question, uh, Chair, uh, and you and I have had the discussion in terms of when we're going to uh, resurrect the, the cross-party lobby group, because there is an issue here in terms of, of, of the Children's Act, and it's never been recognised particularly in Dumfries and Galloway uh, region, that we had a, a proper distribution going back to about 2011. 
Uh, so I think that we need to be a, 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 a government, both uh, Scottish and UK, in terms of the money that's required to, to fully and properly recognise this. Against what the Equalities Commission have said, that they, they should have recognition along with foster carers. So I think there is a big issue in here for us, and it's when are we going to get that lobby group uh, resurrected. My next one is to 3.14, uh, Chair, where it's forecast overspend in residential and nursing placements. And again, uh, Graham uh, Abrines, I'll know that we're, we're, I've been in discussion with him uh, and uh, indeed have a meeting set up, and it's to uh, the people who require the residential care and uh, who, who may require it, but they've got a fear that indeed, uh, particularly in the West, uh, that there's not adequate provision within residential settings. So it, it, it's recognising the overspend and then wondering at the end of the day how we are going to possibly, uh, notwithstanding that uh, we've got to look for efficiency savings, but how we are ever going to bring it into line on the 373 projected this month, uh, and really against that, it's what impact this would have on the service users and whether any are going to be put at risk. Um, I, I can assure Councillor Scobie that nobody will be put at risk. We will not put anybody at risk. We would never put anybody at risk. Councillor Scobie, if I could um, discuss, j just give you assurance that in terms of the national um, agenda related to kinship care, there is absolutely a significant amount of work currently going on. We are awaiting new guidance from the Scottish Government with regards to the awards in relation to the links between foster um, payment and that of kinship care um, and I will come back to committee whenever we've received that. If I could come back Chair, I'm uh, grateful for both, both uh, answers to the questions. I, I, I don't feel any uh, more confident you know, in, in, in that respect but it's addressing to you Chair uh, and the committee in terms of uh, to what Lillian has just said in terms of that there are the risk activity at national level, but we as a, a, a committee, I feel, and a council should be there at the, the, the table or, or, or in parliaments uh, arguing the case that indeed we need greater uh, amount of money to deal with the kinship carers. And, and it's a political question in terms of whether, you know, whether and when we're going to resurrect the lobby group. Um, Councillor Scobie, um, uh, I have uh, had some discussions with the new chair of social work and uh, he had indicated to me that he would come back and respond to your last note which you copied me in on. Councillor Dick. Thanks, Chair. Apologies for being late and apologies if I've already been asked. But 3.19 uh, in relation to high care package review, um, what's the progress in the children's high cost care packages uh, at present? Uh, thank you, Councillor Dick. Uh, we are currently undertaking a review um, as to the use of particularly external from region placements uh, for children and the, the range of issues that are presented. So. Uh, we are certainly reviewing every single care package to look at the appropriateness and ensure that the care packages that are currently in place are appropriate to meet the, meet the needs of the children. Uh, we clearly have new care packages in terms of um, particularly young people with autism coming on um, on a fairly regular basis. So we have started to do some work with our colleagues in education to have a look at the services that are available. So. I suppose the short answer is they're un under constant review um, at this present time, and we would hope that we will be able to get this um, very clear, um, appropriate care packages in place, in the f um, certainly by the, the middle of next year. I could just uh, come back to you. Thanks for the, for, for the answer. Uh, presumably, this will now be a rolling uh, review. Um, have, have we got a sort of set time? Is it done annually? Um, or um, what's the time scale for, for constant review? 
We um, would, certainly the new procedure that's currently being implemented is that young people um, who have care packages will be reviewed on a six monthly basis. Councillor Ferguson. Uh, thanks very much, Chair. Uh, my question is that they're, they're both regarding uh, recruitment, actually. Um, one's at 3.7, 3.8 in terms of the intensive foster, fostering. Um, I'm a wee bit, I appreciate it's a difficult and very sensitive area, but it was supposed to be in place by, this, by last month. And according to the, com the committee paper, we're still trying to recruit. So um, I could, uh, would appreciate an update on why that's the case. The second one is also in recruitment. Um, and it's at 3.10 and 3.22, and it's both regarding the staff, um, where we're carrying significant vacancies. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm asking what the impact is on the members of staff who are remaining in backfilling or increased, have increased workloads. Uh, to keep the service uh, operational. Um, uh, what's it doing to morale, for example, and uh, you know, are we reaching critical overload? Uh, thank you, Councillor Ferguson. Um, in terms of 3.7, um, absolutely correct that we had anticipated that the intensive foster placements um, and carers would have been in place by September. However, um, what I can say at this moment in time is we have now recruited those foster carers. However, the delay has been in ensuring that they are appropriately trained to be able to start to um, offer placements for young people. Um, that training will be concluded and these four additional intensive foster placements will be available for the department to use by November. Um, so absolutely accept there was a delay in that, but we have now got that situation in hand. In terms of um, staff vacancies and situations in terms of recruiting social workers, um, I have to acknowledge that that is a, a problem in attracting social workers to come down and work in the region. Um, however, we're doing um, a significant amount of work currently to mitigate that. Um, we have used some agency staff to cover those vacancies currently. Um, whilst I acknowledge that that's an expensive resource that we would rather not um, use, we have done that to make sure that we continue to deliver those services and I would give you assurance that there will be no um, referrals left un, um, unactioned as a consequence of that. Um, we will clearly be having a look at a service review um, and we will be looking at a prioritisation framework which will assist in ensuring that we are delivering the services um, at the appropriate level. So whilst I acknowledge it does have an impact on staff I'm hoping that as we move forward and have a much more robust prioritisation framework in terms of service delivery, that that will be mitigated. Councillor Hislop. Thank you, Chair. It was within relation to a similar question with the occupational therapy. Uh, we're seeing an underspending there because of the fact that we have uh, staffing vacancies. Is that having a detrimental impact on service performance and subsequently if we're not able to get people back home quick are they going into residential placements where I notice that there is an overspend so do we need to be concentrating a wee bit more on getting people in place? The occupational therapy one um, is different it's moved about a bit we've had a retirement in the west of the region we've had two people replace that, we're restructuring the, the occupational therapy service along with everything else. Um, that will sort itself out, I'm, I'm confident about that. The bit about occupational therapy and, and delays, are, it, we're not aware of any delays to occupational therapy assessments being done. Um, the occupational therapy assessments by our staff are being done as they should be getting done in the community. Councillor Mayo. Thanks, Chair. The main questions have been asked, but what I'm hearing is that under 3.8, that the last sentence now then is redundant, that, that those, those staff will actually be in place in November, and that will, that will go forward, because I was concerned that that was maybe going to take a little bit longer. The other thing that concerns me, Chair, obviously, is the kinship care thing, having been involved, like Councillor Scobie, in a, a cross-party group, etc., and watching how this is, this is growing arms and legs. 
and I'm delighted to hear there's a, review, there's a review, but I think within that review we need to understand the reasons for that increase, and I think we need, if, if it needs further education or, or, or instances even through the education department working with young people coming on to be parents, we've got to somehow stop this and turn it around, because I totally disagree with Councillor Scobie. That we're going to get more, we've got to stop more coming forward because that means dysfunctional families and we've really got to, we've really got to try and stop this, turn it round and, 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 and push it back again because the numbers are growing and I think in a small region like Dumfries and Galloway they are unacceptable and we've got to find a way, as I say, of making this, this fit and work. And with the review, um, I would also like to know, are there sort of cut-off times when we say, right, kinship care, they've been, they've been in that situation for three or four years but now that's no longer needed and it stops? It's not something that just goes on forever. So I think there's quite a lot needed in this review, but I think also a pointer for Dumfries and Galloway Council, how we try and find a way of turning this roundabout, because we've got to turn it roundabout. Uh, thank you for that. I, I would give you assurance that within the review, we'll be looking at all aspects of the current delivery of kinship care. Um, I absolutely agree that we need to, to be very clear in terms of our statutory responsibility and um, how we ensure that we are targeting kinship care at the appropriate level and also at the appropriate um, families that will require it. There will be some new national guidance, as stated, and um, we will be dictated to that in terms of how we will have to ensure that our kinship care processes um, run in tandem with the national objective. However, um, certainly in terms of education, uh, we have started to do some work with our colleagues in terms of looking at parenting skills and how we can start to address that with some of our um, younger people. But um, I think at this moment in time, we have to have a clear process in terms of making sure that the council and the, the committee are confident in the way that we are going to actually run the kinship care scheme. Councillor McKee. Uh, thanks, Chairman. My initial question has been answered, but just on the shortage of social workers, we had a grow your own process for a while. Is that still in, in, in situ? Yes, it is. Um, we have uh, five colleagues who are due to graduate and go into jobs. Um, they'll be uh, registered and in post probably by the end of January. Um, and we've had a further two people just start the four-year programme. So it's still it's still ongoing. Councillor Tuckfield. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my questions are in relation to 318 on page 464. Um, it makes reference to the very high charges from the council for outreach staff. Um, have we any examples of charges from the private sector or or the third party sector, the voluntary sector? Have we any comparisons with costs, or do we have any providers who can actually provide this service? And I'm aware that the council staff have very high standards. I'm not criticising the standards. But I, I do believe over the years we've met with the private sector and the voluntary sector. Um, and in, in, a, in, a, in discussions, we've tried to ensure that um, there would be a healthy third sector and um, private sector, obviously, um, developing in this area. And it may be a way of um, reducing some of the costs, but still maintaining a very high standard. We could give you comparators if, if that's what you want, but that particular overspend relates to the facility in the stewardry. And the decision made by the um, steering group and by the families when before they moved to the individual occupancies from the residential unit was that they were clear they wanted the council to continue to provide that service for their families. Thank you, I understand that, but um, at the same time, there may come a time when the council cannot provide at that cost, and we're all aware of the cost of council services. Thank you. Councillor Maitland. Um, I, I understand where Councillor Tuckfield's coming from. It's a question just of knowing what the answer is um, and, and being able to see transparently what we're, what we're commissioning and why. Um, and uh, I suspect that's something that members um, definitely need to be able to see on an ongoing basis. Um, 
I'd I'd like to ask, um, Chairman, we've um, we've got a couple of reviews going on which have been mentioned already, and I have to say I'd like to be reminded what pieces of work are actually coming to the committee. I know we've got a Care at Home review, I think, which is ongoing. Uh, we've got the Kinship Care review, um, which is also ongoing. Uh, uh, there is an outstanding action to bring back to us the use of spot and block contracts, um, and I'd like to know when that's coming back to us. Um, and um, I, I, do, I do commend um, social work staff for clearly active management of these budgets. Um, I suspect um, if we, we weren't absolutely on top of it, this would be looking a whole lot uh, less promising. But nevertheless, you can't take your foot off the accelerator. We must keep uh, absolutely um, going forward with review and con continuously making certain we're producing uh, better services for uh, uh, people and use public money. Um, but those are two specific questions, I think, there. Um, and um, I, I think we'd, we'd probably like to know, on the back of Councillor Tuckfield's question, uh, how it is that we can be sure that we are commissioning value for money services. Uh, I'm actually quite surprised to hear that, um, that Dunmuir Park um, remained um, in, in council um, control um, because the families and the steering group decided. <laughs> I would have suggested that, in fact, it should be um, a, a council decision. Um, but I'm very happy to be advised. Thank you. In particular relation to that, um, there's a, um, a, we're looking at the, the whole of the, the Council's learning disability services at the minute in terms of um, how we can, I think, offer the value that, that yourself and Councillor Tuckfield and I'm sure every other member um, would, would want us to be able to do. Um, in terms of the other reviews to come back, I'm sure that um, we can give you a timetable of them to come back because I would also add day, um, day centres to that as well. Day centres needs to come back, which I would imagine be, be in, in February. The, the care at home review, we can give you probably an update in February again. Um, I've asked an elected member seminar around about care homes and care at home to be organised as soon as possible. Could I also say that we will come back to committee in December with kinship care review? Councillor Ferguson. Um, thanks very much, uh, Chair. Um, going back to Graham's comment about uh, the Grow Your Own and uh, Lillian as well, is it time to increase the numbers? Um, uh, I remember a few years ago it was the answer to the recruitment problem then. Um, and um, the answer worked very well then, was to actually increase the number of trainee social workers. And I, so I'm just wondering if uh, consideration has been given to that. Um, yeah, that, that, that that's a question that's come up uh, before uh, or after I put my hand up, actually. Um, so I can leave that, I'll leave that hanging and, and leave the uh, Chief Social Worker Officer to come back to us with that one and have a think about that. But, um, the main questions I've got here are um, at 3.14. Um, it's, ac uh, it's actually that they're welcoming the increase in contributions uh, that have been collected. And it's actually really good to see uh, uh, forward planning and risk awareness being brought early to this committee so that we're aware of what the dangers are. Um, the only one downside we see is at 3.5. Actually, what are we doing? Um, historically, we had a, quite a serious... Um, uh, unpaid. Um, it went through the full council accounts as bad debt, but it was actually people no paying their contribution towards care, um, amongst other things. And it, it was a significant amount of money over a significant period of time. So what has been done to actually um, to minimise that? Um, I, I note the new word underachieving. Um, it's not the social work department's fault that they're not getting the money in. It's the people who are not prepared to pay it. And I think we need to change the emphasis on that. So we don't kick the social work department, but we actually say to the people, no, you've been, you, you've been assessed to contribute. Right? Why are you not contributing? Um, I, after all, nobody, I, I don't think, except maybe a handful of people in Scotland that actually pay for all their care. They contribute towards the cost of their care. And uh, I think we need to recognise that. Um, and actually, really, really quite forceful, I would suggest, following 
I'm not, I'm not talking about getting sheriff officers or the elite tramping through folks' doors, but we need to be um, a bit more energetic, shall we say, in, in collecting in monies from people um, in terms of contributions. If I could just um, make one point with regards to that comment, Councillor Ferguson. Um, Angela Patterson, who's not here today, new head of resources, is certainly starting to work with colleagues in finance to allow us to have a more robust early warning system so that we can um, intervene at an earlier stage to try and mitigate some of that circumstance. Thank you. And, and if I can add to that, social work debt is now dealt with as every other council debt is dealt with through the debt recovery process. Well, members, I think we've had a, quite a full debate. Can we move to... Huh? Councillor Nicol. Thank you, the Chair. Um, you, you, you've referred twice, I think, to the, the guidance on kinship care from the Scottish Government and, and any changes that might be there. When are we likely to see that coming through, firstly? And secondly, will it be in time to be taken into consideration in our budget deliberations as a, as a Council? Um, unfortunately, it's likely to be April 2015. Councillor Yan. Thank you, Chair. I just want to um, echo Councillor Ferguson's comment, and I'd like to say it's good to see action on unnecessary needs being monitored closely. And thank you. No further comments or questions from members. We'll move to recommendations. Can we agree the recommendations as contained in section 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, and 2, 4? Thank you. It's been suggested that we add to the recommendations in 2.5. 2.5, the recommendation will be that a full review will be undertaken by social work services in relation to kinship care, and this will come back to committee in December, and that review will look at all aspects of the delivery of kinship care. Councillor Scobie. Yes, yeah, Chair, I have no difficulty with that, provided that we get the fullest of uh, report in terms of, and I've heard some of the comments made in here today, we're talking about children, looking after children uh, and everything else, and indeed the savings that kinship uh, carers provide to this authority should children need to go into care as a result of, of, of the breakdown of families and everything else. So I think that if we are looking at this, then it's the fullest of reports that it's not just in terms of what I seem to get from the, the, the debate today in, in terms of let's reduce this because it is a growing uh, concern. It's been a growing concern for a number of years going back to uh, 2011, as I, I said in, in my remarks. So it, it, it's, I hope it's not a report that comes forward to say this is how we're going to save, but to, to look at it and compare kinship carer with some of the other provisions, i.e. foster carers, etc. Uh, I'm confident that the report that will come to the committee in December will be full in detail and I think we all realise our responsibilities to children who are in need of care. Um, the report will be full in detail and it will have a number of options attached to it you know, for members' consideration. Can we agree the addition of two five? Thank you. Uh, we'll move to item four, which is the external scrutiny of social work services. Um, the report will be presented by Heather Collington. Okay, this is the second um, report on our external scrutiny in terms of regulated services. Um, you'll see the first uh, report that you received was in April, um, and that was about trying to pull together for you so that you could see the overall progress of regulated services. Um, Today, um, I'm giving you a report which includes um, scrutiny on six of our services, 
Uh, that includes um, ARCs at Annam, Newton Stewart, Stonrar, and I've mentioned Dumfries, although the details of that are not included because that that inspection was done at the end of August, and therefore the findings weren't ready in terms of coming through on this one. But I, I want you to know that it had taken part in, in the period that we're reporting on. So it will come back into the next reporting period for you. It also includes um, information on both Hardthorne Road and Cairn Ryan in terms of the inspections of both those services and of Newton Stewart Community Support Service. And there are a number of things that I'd, I'd like you to note, really. And one, of course, would be that um, the ARC in Newton Stewart has, has uh, sixes right across all of the indicators. You know, that's a, a really good achievement. Um, it's something that we rarely see in terms of sixes anywhere. So, you know, it's very much to be commended in terms of the work of that service. Um, additionally, you'll note that there are a number of these that the services as well, um, which have no recommendations from the inspection. And that obviously includes Newton Stewart with its sixes, Stonrar, which was sort of fives and sixes, um, and Newton Stewart Community Support Service. So again, a, a really good achievement whereby um, the care inspectors are reaffirming for those services that they're delivering uh, with no recommendations coming through um, for them at all. Um, and what I've also included, if you look at, at the point on Cairn Ryan House, which is um, was included in the last report and what I've done is because they were then inspected within this period I've been able to give you that comparison between what you saw the last time um, and what we're presenting this time and that then again as an illustration of how services take the recommendations from a report work on those recommendations and that's about part of their continuous improvement around improving their gradings um, and you'll see that has happened for Kern Ryan so in future reports as we go through I would hope to be able to you know, that those, those tables will expand, as it were, to give you that comparison that you'll be able to see, well, the last time we looked at this, it was graded at this level, and this is where it is now, um, so that you're actually able to see that the changes um, or not as the case may be. So I'm more than happy to take any questions that you have um, on the report. Councillor Ferguson. Thanks, Chair. Um, I, I think uh, the first thing to note is that I think every single visit was unannounced rather than like when the Queen comes and you've got a chance to paint everything it does in the walk. Um, so uh, that uh, makes the, the gradings even more uh, special. Um, we have to commend the ARCs for their overall good gradings, um, but as uh, Heather said, Newton Stewart's achievements are actually remarkable. Um, and I'm going to suggest through you, Chair, that uh, with this committee's agreement, we actually refer this back to the Victoria Area Committee for them to note and whatever action they think necessary, because I actually think Newton Stewart um, uh, uh, ARC needs to be um, uh, especially commended, because I don't think I've, I've the Chief Social Worker Officer and the, the Head of Adult Care and, and Heather here, have we ever had sixes before and no recommendations? So it is a truly remarkable achievement. Um, yes, I can confirm we, we haven't had sixes that I'm certainly aware of in terms of across the board. We have had them as parts of fives and sixes in the BR, where our services maybe had a number of areas and one area that is really shown out with a six, but to have sixes across the board is remarkable. And I would also chair commend in terms of Councillor Ferguson's point about them being unannounced. Fizz is absolutely right to raise that one because that does put an additional pressure. That's not a service. You know, these are services which have not had the advantage of the preparation time that you would normally get. Um, and therefore, it's about seeing us as we are. Um, and this is the sort of level of grading that they're able to come out with in those circumstances. Um, I take it that you're recommending that this committee put forward a recommendation to Wigton Area Committee to commend the RC at Newton Stewart. Is that right? Well, yes, I was actually going to speak to Marine about it, but she's not here, so I'm, I'm doing it publicly now. So, yep. Yeah, I have actually visited um, Newton Stewart ARC um, just a matter of a couple of weeks ago. And I have to say I was um, really impressed by the level of facilities that were on offer there. It really is a testament to that management group and also to our officers who actually run the establishment. Um, can I just come back in, Chair? It also gives the others who've actually achieved very good grades um, something to aim for. You, you know, they, they can get better, although they're very, very good. Um, and, and fives are actually a very good assessment. Uh, uh, care Commissioner, sorry, Care Inspector, 
notoriously diffi difficult people to to get good grains out of, and uh, I think we need to, we, we, we commend them all, but especially commend you, Stuart. I think is what I'm trying to say to you. Councillor Maitland. Um, yes, I, I absolutely echo um, the sentiments. These are, on the whole, these are absolutely uh, first class um, uh, results. Uh, what I'd like to know, Chairman, is what our officers going to do with this information. You now we've got, we know, we know it's good. Um, we uh, can see that, um, that in particular, um, the services in Newton Stewart, in and around Newton Stewart for learning disability, are clearly first class. Um, so, what are we going to do about taking that information, plugging it into the review, and telling members what we're going to do with it? Because I don't want to just look at this and say that's very good. I want to know uh, and to be able to trace what we've done with that information through the review and into um, uh, our services so that we can expect to see the same in um, Stuart Tree Annan and Nithsdale. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to answer that. Uh, the the methodology that's been used in Newton Stewart um, will be rolled into the other day centre. Stranraer, I think, but for a piece of paper or two pieces of paper, would have had straight sixes as well. And I'm reliably informed by the team down in Stranraer that the next time that the Care Inspectorate come back, they would expect to get what Newton Stewart has done. Um, the manager in Newton Stewart, um, we are going to not extract from Newton Stewart completely. But we're going to have um, that particular colleague been doing a bit of out and about, not just within the ARCs, because there's a lot of stuff that goes on in Newton Stewart ARC that we could probably transplant into other areas of the service. And we're, we're keen to learn about things that, that go well and about how we can use it elsewhere. So that's what we're going to do with it. Could, could I also say that um, the senior management team view is that we need to encourage a culture of best practice, how we share these very areas that have, have reflected in this report as, as um, providing a high level of standard, and we want to take that across all care groups within social work services. So we're actively working towards a robust performance management framework, which will allow us to ensure that the, the learning from these um, positive services are transferred into other services. Councillor Dick. On, on the basis of, uh, I would like to echo um, Andy's comments about the, the, the Newton Stewart review. Uh, on the basis of Graham's comments about Stranraer, and for the want of a couple of pieces of paper we had straight six, uh, I would commend that as well to the Wigton Area Committee. Uh, I've visited that uh, facility a number of times, and, and quite honestly, it's a, a very high quality. Um, I also think it's a, a facility that could be made, made much more use of. I think there are specific things that are being developed in Newton Stewart, as I say, that could be rolled out, I think, to all of the ARCs um, in terms of more of community hubs. That's, that's one of the tricks that... Um, Newton Stewart have developed over the past couple of years, and certainly I've I've asked whether or not that's feasible in other places. Councillor McKay. Oh, thanks, Chair. It's just that the Cairn Ryan and Hartthorn and both of them education facilities mentioned. Uh, Hartthorn, I would assume that it's the local schools, but Cairn Ryan, I think, is away from. A distance from Sranar, who who provides the education and there do is education supply somebody to come in and and do that. And I think as everybody has said, the the reports you've got back and the markings they've got are are excellent. We can't take anything away from that and our, the staff are to be to be congratulated. But there's one thing on quality environment on the Hartthorn Road. Where are we with that? I noticed the uh, recent work has ensured that all bedrooms are now functional. I don't know how long that bit's been open, but there's been problems, I think, since they first laid the, laid the first brick. Uh, where are we with it, and are we comfortable that it's now a habitable and appropriate accommodation for the youngsters? 
Could I um, just take that in two parts? In terms of the educational input, the young people will be attending whichever resource um, in terms of education that they were linked into before they were looked after and accommodated. So staff will be working with colleagues in education to ensure that that um, educational resource is available to the young people. So I couldn't give you a blanket answer on that one. Um, in terms of Hardthorne Road, then yes, the unit is fully functional, habitable, um, and any issues in terms of the building have now been addressed. Councillor Scobie. Yeah, Chair, and I'll likewise echo the sentiments being expressed in terms of uh, the report and indeed what the care inspector found in, in, in many of our places. Uh, and I think it's worth noting, Chair, that, that, that the ideology uh, has somewhat changed from uh, a number of years ago uh, where our ARCs were under a threat of closure uh, or, or that was the feeling. Uh, that they got, and, and we are now seeing and hearing of the developments of our ARCs and how important they are in the community. And again, just to add to what Ian has said in, in, in terms of Stranraer, uh, where you know we are looking at a good report, and uh, for the sake of a, a couple of pieces of paper, it could have been up at the sixes as well. But just only last, uh, within the last week or so, I've received. Uh, 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 the, a piece of paper where the, the uh, resources that the ARC use in Stranraer, i.e. the cafe in, in, in Agnew Park, uh, and that's out to consultation and whether indeed that would still be a, a, a resource for the, the ARC. And these are the things that we need to maintain to uh, hold to the high quality that they deliver. Uh, and likewise, uh, to give more support to the, the project in Stranraer, uh, I think it's called uh, uh, Community Planters or whatever, the one at Stair Park that would give, uh, way, give a, an opportunity for kids leaving school at 18, uh, along with the ARC, an opportunity to train, to, to, to reach qualifications and everything else. So we should be looking at the report and, uh, and be delighted with it, but to, to, to improve and support some of the, the, the projects that are going on in these areas. Turning to the, 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 the Cairn Ryan House issue, and again I'm pleased to say, and as Andy says, it, it, it wasn't a Queen's visit or, 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 or the assemblance of a Queen's visit, but it was done a, a, as a sport visit. But the, 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 there are anecdotes uh, coming from Cairn Ryan where not is all well uh, in respect of, of, of Cairn Ryan House. Uh, uh, and uh, indeed some of the fears and anxieties that were raised uh, by the people of Cairn Ryan at the time. Uh, and while it's pleasing to note uh, the, the care inspectors report, there are issues here, here in terms of uh, recommendations and, uh, and progresses uh, in respect of uh, care plans, how young people do react. And indeed, if there are any issues within Cairn Ryan House, not being uh, wishing to expose any of, of, of the kids in there, but we, uh, I would ask that we, we are made aware of them uh, rather than some of the anecdotal uh, stories that are coming out of Cairn Ryan House uh, within the uh, area, the, 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 the Cairn Ryan village. Uh, so I would ask, yes, we do note this, but we've also got to keep an eye on whether indeed uh, notwithstanding we are there, whether indeed it is at the right place, uh, and Jock has referred to uh, as the education, there are many other aspects in terms of what's available to the young kids at Cairn Ryan, and whether this is having a, an effect on uh, perhaps their uh, behaviour at Cairn Ryan. Clearly, uh, Councillor Scobie, I'd be happy to take any issues that you would wish to raise with me on that matter. Can, can I also just, just come back round about the the, the learning disability services that we offer. There are currently, including the, the ARCs, there are 21 learning disability projects, um, all, of, all of which have got substantial potential for growth, continuation, social enterprise, education, etc., etc., etc. Myself and um, uh, colleagues are working hard to bring that 
um, on stream on board, and but we'd be very happy to bring that back to committee at some point to say this. Here are our proposals. Could that report be sooner rather than later? Because there there, there are issues that, that I think that the these projects that, that Graham referred to, uh, uh, and they are uh, worth the projects uh, with a great deal more support, and it's how we as a committee can support this and the wider council of these projects. I'm happy to do that, but I prefer bring you back a complete package if that's acceptable. Councillor Carruthers. Thank you, Chair. It's in regards to 3.2.1, uh, which relates to an activity in the resource centre. Uh, so let me find it. It's uh, Anna was the poorest, but still good. Out, out, out of the, the three up to now, the next deal still to come. It still reflects as being good, though, but the recommendations pretty much are saying there was a lack of information being gathered and collected in the right manner, for, for what I can understand. So the first question was, was there enough, enough information there for the care inspector to actually make a properly, uh, proper evaluation of what was actually going on in Arden at the time. In regards to the, I think it's uh, recommendation three progress, it's the, the service should assess the areas identified in this report and undertake refurbishments as needed. And it refer, re, refers on to the, it's in, oh, about the quality of, of environment, the fire regulations, and it's the whole thing, it's the whole building in general, actually, how it works, how it complies. So, I mean, is it the right building, actually, is probably what I'm trying to get to. Can, can we actually create the right, the right environment with that building that's actually being used at the moment? Is it fit for purpose? I think, I think there's a couple of things in there. First of all, the manager down there is fairly new, um, having been brought down there from Dumfries off the back of somebody else retiring. So some of the paperwork, they, they, they knew that that was going to happen when they came in and they've been working away on that. I would expect to see an improvement the next time that the care inspector are there. The second thing around about the, the, the building is a, is a very interesting point. Um, if you compare, for example, Stranraer or Newton Stewart, or indeed Dumfries, with Annan, um, Annan is probably the, 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 the building that is least um, fit for purpose. It's not that it's not fit for purpose, but it's probably least fit for pu purpose. And I understand from colleagues that during refurbishment programmes that have taken place previously, Annan wasn't included in it, whereas others were. Now, again, going forward, we would obviously want to bring that up to the same standard as others. Uh, whether or not it's the right place, um, I think is, is, is perhaps a different discussion. Well, thanks very much for that. that. That last part in particular, I'm glad you're aware of that, that it's maybe not the best of building it and the fact that it's maybe not the right place, but it's something that should be looked at and at least evaluated. Thank you. Councillor Nicol. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, this is, I mean, by and large, a very good news story um, and remarkably good in the fact that everybody, they were all unannounced visits, which, as Andy says, the, everything that Disney moves gets should be painted and etc. So this was, didn't happen. This is as, as seen as, as it operates on a day-to-day -day basis. My comment is on the fact that Newton Stewart got sixes right through and that's remarkable and never been seen before. The person who runs that establishment is a remarkable person and you're going to take her out and scatter her around a bit. Don't spread her too thin is my only plea um, because I wouldn't like to see I'm all for upgrading the other ones and getting them up to the same standard, but I wouldn't like to see Newton Stewart slipping just because the poor person was uh, spending too much time away from home, so to speak, because it can happen. I think that's noted. <laughs> Councillor Tuckfield. Thank you, Chair. On page 29, the third paragraph on the bottom of the page, you make reference to um, progress. Um, and you intend for residential staff to gain knowledge of leaving care systems. Have they had that training as yet? Uh, we're currently undertaking a significant training programme with our residential staff. So um, I couldn't say that every member of staff has received that training, but there is um, processes in place to ensure that they do. Come back here briefly. Um, could we have some insight into the training that they're having, or could we be involved in some way? Because we are corporate parents, 
And I would certainly like to know what is being provided for young people leaving care. I'm certainly happy to um, provide that information for committee, yes. Members, uh, any further questions or comments? Uh, can we move to recommendations as contained in 2? Two? 2-1? Two, 2-2? One. Two, two. Thank you. So we'll add to the recommendations that this committee puts forward to Wigton Area Committee that they should commend um, the, the reports in that area. Agreed? Agreed, yeah. Um, I, I also didn't ask that this committee commend the staff involved. I think that's what I said, yeah. We'll move to item five, which is appointment to outside bodies. Um, you take me. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would w w wish to um, ask the committee to appoint a member to the Alcohol and Drug Support Southwest of Scotland service, as detailed at section 3.1, and to appoint a member to the Voluntary Action, Dumfries and Galloway, as detailed in section 3.2 in accordance with the Council scheme of representation on outside bodies. Councillor McKay. Yes, this is no disrespect to the author of this report because they weren't here at the time, but I did not resign from Volunteer Action Dumfries and Galloway. After the last election, you will recall that the administration at that time came out with a list of people who would attend these various committees and the Labour group was not included in them. So that, if he'd delete resignation from that, I'd be quite happy. Councillor yeah. Yen. Thank you, Chair. Uh, to my memory, uh, I do not know if Volunteer Action Dumfries and Galloway is still operational. Uh, I thought the volunteer action has been now emerged to third sector first. Um, I'm happy to reflect on that and um, come back to committee with um, that information. My understanding is it is still functional. Councillor McKay. Right, I'll volunteer to go into volunteer action if it's still in existence. Councillor McGregor. I would agree with that, and I would suggest that the Chair of Social Work takes on the position on alcohol and drug support in, in his absence, um, as it was the Chair that stepped down off that. I think it would be appropriate that the new Chair steps onto that. <laughs> well, he's not here to defend himself, so he's the easiest person to nominate. <laughs> I'm happy to accept the nomination of uh, Councillor McKay, but I'm a bit reluctant to... <laughs> to place someone in a position when they're not actually here. Then, I, I, think, I think Councillor McGregor made a nomination. Could we then wait and see if the chairman will take up that post and, and, and finalise it at the next meeting? I'm happy with that. Okay, we'll then move to item six, which is the minute of the Social Work Services Subcommittee meeting of the 28th of August. Great, thank you. Move to item seven, minutes of older people's consultative group meetings on 26th of March 2014 and 10th of June 2014. Councillor McGregor. Chair, can I just raise a slight issue, and it's got nothing to do with the minutes, but I think it's probably quite relevant at this stage, and it would apply to the one that we've just agreed. Um, if you'll indulge me, and if, if it's not appropriate, please say so. Um, I'm aware that quite a lot of elderly people across the region have received letters from the NHS, basically telling them that the podiatry services will now be stopping. Um, and I've looked through the minutes of these, and there's been no discussion at any point um, you know, as to the impact that that could have on people 
you know, particularly elderly people or, or, or folk who rely on these services. And the impression I get is that social work are going to have to pick up the, the overview of that care within personal care packages and, and sort of home care packages, you know, the personalisation agenda. Um, and that's certainly the impression that's been given by the letter that came out from the NHS. And I think, you know, it, because it's older people's consultative and social work sub, I would have liked to have seen some discussion, particularly at the social work sub. Um, w was social work ever consulted on this? Because um, it seems to me that it's a cut that the NHS has made that we may have to pick up, you know, the, the care side of it for now. So anyway, as I say, it's maybe not relevant to the minute, but it's something for us to think about. I think um, Councillor Ferguson may have some prior knowledge and information regarding this. Um, thanks, Chair. Uh, j just a couple of things. Uh, Podiatry Service did a presentation to the OPCG um, in Castle Douglas about nine months ago, somewhere about there, um, where they also offered free training to volunteers and, uh, and relatives in very basic foot care. Um, I, you're right, however, about um, this letter that's going out, um, as is the same as the one going out about the dental service, and I would think that will be um, a heated item of discussion at the next uh, social work subcommittee, um, because both uh, dental and podiatry are integral parts of the integration health social care, right? So no decision should have been made by the NHS at this stage. Um, and I believe it's actually been to the NHS board about the dentists. I don't know if the podiatry is the same. Uh, podiatry service is the same. So um, uh, th th this, this is, uh, I, I'll just reiterate, uh, this consultative group was set up by the council and, and the NHS jointly as, this, uh, as the principal means of uh, uh, consulting uh, older, older people. Um, and uh, increasingly, they're not being consulted. And... Uh, they are, in effect, almost, uh, uh, you know, official consultees, um, you, you know, like, for example, uh, uh, local community councils. Right? It should be automatic that everything that's anything to do with older people should be going for consultation in this group. Yeah. Um, so, um, I mean, I'm still on that, um, and I'm happy to continue if, uh, if this committee is happy for me to continue um, uh, and represent the council there. I mean, basically, we just chair the meetings um, and then let the old folk uh, and the representatives uh, discuss things. Councillor Mayor. Yeah, Chair, <clears throat> same, the, the same fears. Um, I, I know I, I made the mistake of going into Langham Day Centre the other day and got nailed by about seven or eight elderly people very, very concerned about the podiatry service. And I said I would try and make sure that this was actually discussed at the Community Health and Social Care Partnership Board. And I think that's where it needs to come to. And we need to make absolutely certain it is on the agenda and it is fully discussed. Because as we develop further services, it looks like we're starting to cut some back without discussion. Um, so it, 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 it's a bit, it, it caused a bit of angst, I think, right across the region. I think with that reassurance that it is on the agenda somewhere, uh, I, you know, as you say, there's a lot of very elderly people who are con really concerned about it. And to be fair, the, the carers that they have going into their houses for half an hour twice a day maybe don't have the time or the capacity to do that and pick up that service. So I think, you know, for the NHS just to simply say, no, it's no longer happening unless you have type 1 diabetes, um, you know, it, it's really sort of set the hairs running in the elderly community. So as long as it's on the agenda somewhere, I will be happy with that. Thank you. Okay, I have no further business. Thank you all for your attendance.